How is the core of the internet actually structured? So regardless of whether you believe that the internet was designed to survive some sort of nuclear attack or not, there are fundamental trade-offs in the design of uh, computer networks like the internet between cost and robustness. So let's walk through a simple example showing, uh, showing this with just a small number of nodes. So let's say that I have four computers um, that want to communicate with each other. So these computers want to be able to transmit uh, data in the form of packets uh, between each other. And uh, you know, A wants to be able to communicate with B, C, and D, and all the other uh, computers want to be able to communicate with, with each other. So keep in mind that establishing communication links between these computers is not free. And so you can imagine that each link has some sort of fixed cost to it that we need to consider. The cheapest way to connect these computers together that uses the smallest number of links is to connect them like this. Well, there's, there's a variety of different ways to do this, but if I establish a connection between A and C, then A can communicate with C. If I can establish a connection between C and D, then A can communicate with C and D, and D can communicate with C and A, and C can communicate with A and D. And if I establish one final connection, then this network is now fully connected. So all the nodes, by transmitting data through intermediate nodes, can communicate with each other. So this is a fully connected network, and I've used, you can see here, three links. So this is the network that connects all the nodes, uses the fewest number of links. Unfortunately, this network has a pretty serious problem. It's not robust. So for example, if I want to disconnect part of this network, all I have to do is remove one link. So if this link goes down for any reason, then my network is now partitioned into two parts. Two computers here, A and C, two computers here, B and D, that can continue to communicate with each other, but can't access uh, the other part of the network. And so if somebody at A was trying to use a website that was hosted at B, they would not be able to do that. And so that would be very frustrating. As if I want to make this network more robust, what I have to do is I have to spend more to build more links between the computers. So let's say that I want to tolerate the loss of one uh, link. If I establish a new link up here, now I've, this network now has four links in it. So it's more expensive than the cheapest network that I could build that connected all four computers. But it's also more robust because this network can now tolerate the loss of one link. So for example, if this link goes down, then B normally would talk to D directly. But if this link is severed, then B can still talk to D by routing through A, C, and over to D. So this is the sort of fundamental trade-off here. I can add more links to this network. And as I add more links to this network, the network gets more expensive, but also more robust. Because this network that I just built, although it can tolerate one link failure, it cannot tolerate two link failures. So if two links go down, any two of the links, then I'm going to partition my network. So in this case, C is now all by itself and very lonely. A, B, and D can still communicate with each other, but C is totally disconnected from the rest. Um, and so if I want to be able to tolerate two link failures, then, as you might expect, I have to create another link. Now I can tolerate two link failures. Because if these, now it, it really depends on what the links are. So once I start adding links, it depends on which links are failing. If I uh, cut off all the links to C, no matter how many other links are in the network, then C will be disconnected. But in this network, for example, if this link goes down and this link goes down, then the network is still fully connected. C can talk to A, which can talk to B this way and talk to D. Um, and all the other computers can, can use this, these links and ignore the ones that are broken. So this network, now the most expensive network, now this now required five links, right? So I'm, now I'm up to five links. And the network is you know, 66% uh, more expensive than the original network I wanted to build, because links aren't, aren't free. The fully connected network I can build is this one. This is the network that has the most links, and unless I start building redundant links between the nodes. So this network has now one, two, three, four, five, six links. And 
it can tolerate even more failures. So for example, even if I cut off two of the links that go to C, C still has another link that it can use to communicate with A and reach the rest of the network. And so the fundamental um, trade-off that the internet has made and the sweet spot that the internet tries to find or has found is this balance between a fully connected network like this one, which is now, you'll notice, twice as expensive as the original network that was, uh, but it's the, this is the most robust network that I've created. This is the cheapest network that I've created. So in general, as we add links to the internet, we increase robustness, uh, we also increase capacity. But as we add links to the internet, the internet gets more expensive. So where we are today is somewhere in general in this middle area where there are routing alternatives on the internet that provide robustness, but the internet is far from a fully connected network. It would require, you know, for, to fully connect the internet, you would need billions of cables reaching to every computer on the internet, and that's obviously infeasible. So the, the network that we built today is this compromise between robustness and cost.